What's going on gardeners? It is Tuesday, October 18th, and we are facing a record low tonight and possibly a three week early frost here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. But I am warm and fuzzy inside, and that's because something amazing has happened. My fig breeding experiment has yielded its first fruit, and I can't wait to show you it. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications. And check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Breeding figs is a very unique technical and scientific thing. So there's going to be a lot of technical terms that I'm going to use in this video. If you're interested in how to breed figs, I will link to a full playlist above where I documented the entire procedure. Here you can see all 42 of my fig seedlings. They are all doing incredible and they are all about my height after only one year. They're all pretty much five to six feet tall. Some are even taller than I am, which is absolutely amazing that they can grow from seed this rapidly. Many of you have asked me over the years, why do I grow so many fig trees? I must have 80 to 100 in total. I've completely lost count. And the answer is they fruit incredibly rapidly, especially compared to almost any other fruit tree. Most grafted fruit trees take anywhere from two to four years on average to produce mature fruit. And if you grow from seed, it can be ridiculous durations. Things like apples, pears, citrus, they can take seven to ten years or more from the time you plant that seed before the tree gets mature enough to actually produce ripened fruit. And if you grow something nuts like an avocado, it can take ten to fifteen years if they ever decide to fruit at all. And when you grow from seed, you get a tree usually of unknown quality. So you can spend a decade or more to get a fruit tree that frankly isn't very good. That's what makes fig trees so awesome. All 42 of these fig seedlings that you you see right here, I planted from seed at the end of last summer. So it's only been one year and two of them have already produced fruit. That is insane. This is the very first fig that fruited for me. You can see there are three large figs on that. I don't know if it's a male or female fig tree yet. And this right here is the second fig tree that fruited for me. You can see there is a big cluster of figs on top. And then as I go down, you will see I have a ripe fig on there, or at least one in the process of ripening. When growing fig trees from seed that have been pollinated by a persistent capra fig, which gives the genetic allele that allows figs to hold and persist on the tree without pollination, there are four different outcomes. You can have a male fig tree that is persistent, or caducus, and you can have a female fig tree that is persistent or caducus. The only fig tree of any value to me is a persistent female fig tree. That is a female fig tree because only females have edible fruit and it has to be persistent, which means it can hold and persist and ripen fully on the tree without pollination from the fig wasp because very few people on earth live nearby an area that has native fig wasps. They come from the Mediterranean. So if you don't live there or next to agricultural areas, like in some pockets of California, where the wasp was artificially established, you cannot grow anything other than a female persistent fig tree. So because I live in North Carolina, fig pollination is impossible by natural means. So if I grow a fig tree and the fruit ripens on it and I can eat it and it tastes good and it's edible, that means it is a persistent female fig. And that's exactly what I'm looking for here. So if I have a ripening fruit on my tree that I can eat, that's all I need to know. That means that anybody can grow that fig. Because I have a fig on this fig tree that is actively ripening, that means it has to have the persistent gene that allows it to hold without pollination. And because it is on the New Year's wood, that is a main crop fig. So there are only two possibilities with this fig right here. It is either a persistent male capra fig, which has no value to me, other than for breeding purposes, or it is a persistent female fig, which means it is edible and it now has value because anybody in the world can grow this fig. And unfortunately, it's not 100% ripe yet. It's in the process of softening, but because of this darn early frost, I have to pick it now. I really wish I could have let this hold for another few days. So I'm gonna pull this off the tree and the latex sap that's coming off of it means that unfortunately, this was not fully ripe, but if it still tastes good and it's sweet, we know we have a lady on our hands. And for documentation purposes, this fig tree is a cross between the UCR 271-1 Salib Capra fig and the Sangue de Drago Rosso female fig. 
Now we get to cut this open and we get to find out if this is a male or female fig. Ooh, wow. That to me looks like a female fig. It looks juicy. It looks like it has a completely edible interior. I really thought from the funny feeling of the outside that it could be a capra fig, but now that I actually see what this fig looks like inside, uh, I'm almost certain that that is pretty much close to the way of being ripe and edible. So let's give this thing a taste test. So here we have our very first fig. I'm very optimistic about this and I can't wait to give it a shot. Wow, that is a lot better than I thought it would be. This did not look very good from the outside. It kind of has this really strange, dry looking exterior. And inside, it doesn't have a whole lot of color on it, which is kind of strange. Uh, I thought it would have a deeper, redder interior, uh, considering the parent I crossed it with. But it actually tastes pretty good. I would say this fig kind of tastes like a cross between an Olympian and a Smith. Uh, it has, because it's a little underripe, it has a bit of a melon undertone to it, uh, as most figs do when they are not perfectly ripe. But it also kind of tastes like honey, and I detect some type of berry flavor, either a strawberry, uh, a strawberry or a cherry. And I'm really upset that, uh, that I had to harvest it so early because I'm really blown away by how very good that fig was. Uh, I wasn't expecting much from the very first fig. I thought it would be pretty lousy. I thought it might take a few years for the fig tree to produce better fruit. Uh, but that right there was quite delicious. And I, I'm, I'm thrilled right now. I'm absolutely blown away. I, I don't know what else I can say other than that. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to label this fig tree as a persistent female. I have my very first female fig tree that I bred from, from hand pollination and it's its own unique variety. That is, that is just really cool and it tastes great. I, I don't know what else to say other than that. I'm just, I'm just really happy right now. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in that white paint pen that I used to write on that, uh, that container, uh, these are the same paint pens I used to write on my cuttings. They can write on wood, glass, metal, uh, plastic, whatever. I have them all linked in my Amazon storefront down in the video description under garden accessories. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive. They're made by Sharpie. I love these things. When I first considered embarking on this journey in breeding figs, a lot of folks were dissuasive about it, uh, mainly because they had experience with collecting wild figs out in California, where the fig wasp has been established uh, about a century ago, a little more than that, and wild seedlings pop up left and right. And the thought was the chances of getting a persistent female is very low, and even if you do, the fruit quality will probably be pretty poor because the overwhelming majority of the wild fig seedlings found aren't really all that great. And I believe that is true when you're left up to mother nature to do the process for you. But because I was able to select a really high quality persistent capper fig as the father, and I only used my best female figs that I love the most as the mother, that basically gives you the best possible genes possible. If you have a, a good quality father and a really good quality mother, chances are you're going to have a higher percentage of having really good quality fruit as the offspring. So to only have one fig ripen so far, and it happens to be a persistent female that also just so happens to taste really good at this age, right off the bat, it's very encouraging and I'm really happy about this. So because I only had two figs fruit this very first season and we have really cold weather coming in, chances are this is going to be the only update on the fig breeding experiment this season. But hey, I wasn't really expecting any update at all. I didn't think I'd have a single fig set fruit the very first year, let alone uh, knock a home run right out of the park, right out of the gate uh, with a persistent female. So uh, beyond thrilled. Thank you to everyone that has participated and stuck around for this fig breeding experiment uh, up to this point. This is really encouraging and I expect greater things next year since it'll be year two. Chances are a lot more of the figs will fruit and I will have more new varieties coming. So everybody, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful and exciting, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I used in this video, like the paint pen, or any of the products that I use in my garden in general in real life, they are all linked down in my Amazon storefront link in the video description. So expand 
expand the video description and click on the storefront link for everything I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all again so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. What a good boy Dale is getting his nails cut. He's such a good boy. Well, he doesn't enjoy it, but he's being very good about it. Thank you for being such a good boy, Dale. I know it's no fun to get those big old claws cut, but you're doing such a good job. Thanks for being such a sweetheart, buddy. You're the best. You're the best.